Nathaniel Bandy. Striving for originality. This top 10 intro is brought to you by Vector Star Productions. Hey everyone! So, this top 10 was actually created by the Twitch audience. Pretty neat, huh? Or maybe scary. I don't even know yet. People have been fighting about this topic for years. Today, we'll be covering the 10 greatest Nintendo consoles based off of my opinions and the chat's opinions. Time to get your nostalgia on. Without further ado, let's a go! So, the Game Boy Color. You know this thing is old if it has to have the name Color in it. This was the first Nintendo console I ever owned as a child, and I absolutely loved it. This was the system that introduced me to Super Mario Bros, Pokemon, and even Pac-Man. Yeah, I played Pac-Man on the Game Boy Color before I played it in the arcade. Pretty cray cray, oh my god. Now there's definitely a big disadvantage to this system that kids from this generation won't understand. There is no backlight. I'll never forget those days when me and my family had road trips at night, and I had to plug in an accessory that was literally a burst of light just so I could see the game I was playing. Some of the amazing games on the system were Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, the Pokemon franchise, Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons slash Ages, Shantae, Link's Awakening DX, Wario Land 3, I mean the list just goes on and on. Another big problem is this thing ran on batteries. Back then, rechargeable batteries weren't really a thing, and the Game Boy Color sucked a lot of money out of your parents' wallet. Because, let's be honest, you did not buy your Game Boy, you did not buy the batteries, your parents did. The lifespan on the console was pretty short, but Nintendo's handheld market quickly improved its Game Boy lineup. More on that later. Man, when I first heard about the Nintendo DS on the internet back in 2004, and saw that my favorite game ever, Super Mario 64, was being remade on the console, I flipped out. I actually didn't realize that people didn't really like the idea of two screens that much, I thought it was the best idea ever! The DS is one of Nintendo's best-selling consoles to date, and has an incredible lineup of games. I mean, it has Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, New Super Mario Bros, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Nintendogs, Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, Elite Beat Agents, Cooking Mama, Brain Age, I mean just wow! The DS was the first system to get touchscreen perfectly integrated with the console correctly. Other consoles like the GameCom tried to have a touchscreen as well, but failed miserably. Having the top screen generally be the main place to play the game and the bottom screen be used for inventory or maps was ingenious and made for some incredible experiences. The DS was also their first handheld to have a microphone. I find it was best used in Nintendogs. Man, at the time, it really felt like I was raising a puppy. The DS could also play GBA games. It had PictoChat, you could download and play games wirelessly, and there were even online features. The DS is actually the best sold Nintendo console with over 150 million sold. That's like 3% of the whole world. World. I think. I don't know. I don't math. Number eight. The Nintendo Entertainment System. It's not what started it all, but it saved the gaming industry. The gaming crash in 1983 happened because of an oversaturation of bad games on the Atari platform, but Nintendo saved the day with Super Mario Bros. That's not all it did though. It practically invented the D-pad. Nowadays, people won't even think about the D-pad as anything special, but it was amazing at the time. Most controllers had joysticks that were awkward and hard to use outside of arcades. This console introduced all of the best Nintendo IP that are still relevant to this date. These include Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Mega Man, DuckTales, Castlevania, Kirby, Kid Icarus, Punch-Out, and so on. The console originally came with Rob as an additional toy to play as. While extended periods of play can hurt your fingers, the controller is very solid and it just feels strong. If you want, you can throw your controller on the ground when you lose in Ghosts and Goblins and know that it won't break. I wouldn't try that with a gamepad though. Just. No. A lot of our parents from previous generations own this console and still remember playing games on them. It has left quite an impact. What I find most memorable about the console is all the terrible add-ons that you could purchase with your NES. Aside from the zapper being great, the bad ones include the Power Glove, Rollin' Rocker, the U-Force, and Power Pad. My biggest guilty pleasure about the NES is having to blow into your cartridges to get them to work. I know it doesn't actually help, but I swear it does. It's a gut feeling and those are never wrong. So ha! Number 7! 
Oh man, Nintendo threw a huge curveball with the Nintendo Wii. This was the console that got your 80 year old grandma off her feet in beating you and bowling on the Wii Sports. This really helped bring the casual audience into gaming. People say that that audience has all left, but I actually don't think so. They've just moved on to the mobile gaming market. So, yeah, motion controls. It was freaking amazing at the time. The controller itself was split into two, with the main one shaped like a TV remote and the nunchuck attachment shaped like a dildo. Well, hot damn! You also can't forget the amazing Wii Shop channel with a huge list of virtual console games. There were so many old games available and tons not even from Nintendo consoles. The Wii introduced huge titles like Mario Galaxy, Wii Fit, Wii Sports, Smash Bros. Brawl, Mario Kart Wii, and its ability to play custom tracks through hacking, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, Xenoblade Chronicles, etc. There are some pretty big drawbacks though that are still affecting Nintendo to this day. Since the console was only twice as powerful as the GameCube, it didn't have the best third-party support. Now obviously, it sold way better than the 360 and PS3, but the games weren't as powerful or even in HD. A lot of people looked at this console as intended for a casual audience and Nintendo lost a lot of their hardcore audience because of this. Regardless, this console will never be forgotten for making such a huge impact on the gaming industry. Sony and Microsoft probably wouldn't have created the PlayStation Move and Connect had the Wii not sold so well. The Miis were a very interesting future too, because not only could you make your own character, but they were added in the games you played. On top of all that, you could also play GameCube games on this thing. Phewey! Number six. So while the Game Boy Advance was a huge step forward from the Game Boy Color, the GBA SP pushed it to a point of perfect polish. This thing was incredible at the time. I owned an SP for several years and is probably still my favorite handheld console of all time. The biggest feature was being able to see the freaking screen thanks to the backlight. I could play GBA games now at night. I also loved how strong and compact the system was. It felt like a nice solid brick. It just did not want to break. See, this is what I love about the older consoles. They're all built so firmly. Some great games on the system were Mario Kart Super Circuit, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, the Sonic Advance Trilogy, Minish Cap, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Fire Emblem Advance Wars, WarioWare, and many more. It also didn't take batteries and you could charge it while playing. The battery life was great and Nintendo released updated versions of the SP with longer battery life and a brighter screen. The SP also brought a lot of great NES and SNES ports to the Game Boy. There was even this lineup of games called Game Boy Advance Video, where you could watch TV episodes or full movies. I remember owning Shrek, Shark Tale, and episodes of Spongebob on the Game Boy. Granted, the quality was awful, but it was still so cool. It was like a predated version of the iPhone. Number five. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a system well worthy of the title, Super. Let's start with the games. There are too many gems on this thing. There's of course all the fantastic RPGs like Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy, as well as games like Donkey Kong Country, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Kart, Mario World, Super Metroid, A Link to the Past, Star Fox, etc, etc, etc. All of the etc. Oh my goodness. The fight between the SNES and Genesis was intense in the 90s. I can only imagine how exciting it must have been to live back then. I mean, I was born in 93, but that doesn't really qualify me for being a part of the Bit Wars. This console introduced the four button layout and shoulder buttons, which is used for practically every game console to date. And to graphics. So the good back then. I mean, the only bad thing about this console is that SNES Rainbow Road exists. Take that, Jacob. Ha 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 Let's talk about a little company called Rare. They created the beautiful Donkey Kong Country and Killer Instinct, and man, did they help Nintendo sell consoles. They were the game developer gods until they were bought out by Microsoft. Damn it, Microsoft! And the Super FX chip was a processor of the future. It allowed games like Star Fox and F-Zero to be made, and it could make games look 3D on a console that couldn't really do that. That is way cool. Number four. Despite being one of the worst named consoles in gaming history, the Wii U is a very underrated console. It does a lot of things really well, and a lot of things really poorly. So yeah, the gamepad's battery sucks, the sales are terrible, they have virtually no third-party support, and the console isn't that powerful. Quite frankly, a lot of these features aren't that big a deal, but they really need to be addressed for the next Nintendo console release. This system has some fantastic first-party games. Nintendo has made only a couple bad ones so far. Some of the great games include Super Mario Maker, Mario Kart 8, Smash for Wii U, 
U, Splatoon, Yoshi's Willy World, Pikmin 3, Mario 3D World, and Xenoblade Chronicles. Nintendo also tried to make a social media type thing with Miiverse, and it kind of worked, I guess? It's neat that there's communities and forums for each Wii U game, and I love that you can draw stuff and post it on Miiverse, but it feels very limited still. The gamepad, while a bit excessive, is amazing because you can play off screen. So if you want to poop while playing, go for it. I've done it before. And how could we not forget about Amiibo? These adorable little figurines are so intriguing. They're causing full-grown men like me to go out and buy dozens of these toys. They aren't just toys though. You can scan them into certain games and they'll add small additions to the game as well as be play buddies. You can also play Wii games on here and the eShop offers a ton of indie games as well as some virtual console titles. I think the Wii U will be one of the most underrated systems of all time. Number three. So like five years ago, 3D was the biggest gimmick, and it was all over the place. There were 3D movies, 3D phones, and even 3D consoles like the Nintendo 3DS. I'm gonna be real, I didn't really like the 3D on the console, but that's not that big a deal. I mean, you can turn it off if you want. The price at first was way too high, but once it dropped, everyone started to get this thing. It has a very decent lineup of games like Pokemon X slash Y, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Smash for 3DS, Mario 3D Land, Animal Crossing New Leaf, Kid Icarus Uprising, Triforce Heroes, A Link Between Worlds, and so, so much more. Man, I'm adding a lot of lists to this top 10. Hmm, I blame the chat. So this console has a lot of cool things integrated into it, like a gyro sensor, as well as a 2D and 3D camera. I mean, just wow, a 3D camera. While it's great the 3DS had a circle pad, I don't find it the most comfortable, and it can break down rather easily. There's lots of different themes you can download onto the home screen, which is pretty sweet. One thing that's a minor annoyance is the virtual console on the 3DS. It's pretty much a joke. There's very few good things it offers. I do have to say, though, that the online functionality for a handheld is pretty great, and the AR cards were a pretty neat idea. They weren't really used for any games, but it definitely felt very revolutionary. Number two. Oh my goodness, the Nintendo GameCube. I remember getting this thing for Christmas, and God, it was so amazing. I got Melee and Super Monkey Ball bundled with it. I was one happy camper. This console has one of my most favorite Nintendo controllers of all time. It just feels so good to hold. It looked very different from any other controller out there, but it was all very intuitive. The C-Stick was not perfect, and the D-Pad was a bit small, but it's still really great. I do have to ask Nintendo, what was the point of adding the handle to the back? I don't think it ruins the console console itself, it's just funny that it exists. The games on this thing are just Mwah! So good! Some great ones were Mario Sunshine, Mario Kart Double Dash, Monkey Ball 1 and 2, Luigi's Mansion, Twilight Princess, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, Melee, Metroid Prime, Windmaker, Animal Crossing, Pikmin, I mean, holy crap! BRB, gotta freak out! Whoa! So the GameCube had a lot of really fantastic add-ons. These include the Game Boy Advance adapter, WaveBird controllers, and the Game Boy Player. The GBA adapter allows you to play some GameCube games with the Game Boy Advance, and the Game Boy Player lets you play Game Boy games on the GameCube. That is amazing sauce-tacular. This was also the first Nintendo console to have a menu so you could change the in-game clock and swap around memory card data. The one big problem were the tiny discs. While they're adorable, it made it harder for third-party developers to develop for the console since it stored a lot less space. And, and now, the, the number, number one, one best, best Nintendo, Nintendo game console is... So the Virtual Boy sucks. Joke out of the way. N64 to time. You knew this was going to be number one on the list. I like the system. The chat likes the system. We all like the system. Get with the system or get out. The N64 was Nintendo's first 3D console. And boy, is it number one because this is our biased list. I love how the controller was made for people with three hands. It's got three grips on the thing. Honestly, the controller really isn't that great. But I have so many memories getting blisters from the joystick playing Mario Party that I can't help but love it. Some of the games on this system them are Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Diddy Kong Racing, Star Fox 64, GoldenEye 007, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Mario Kart 64, Paper Mario, Super Smash Bros, Banjo Kazooie, and Superman 64! Yeah, Superman 64. That was. That was good. Hmm. Probably the best part about the N64 was that it was made for local multiplayer games. There were a ton, and I've had so many great experiences playing multiplayer. The graphics aren't that great, not going with discs drove away third parties, and there were almost no launch titles. The thing is though, I have an undying love for this console. That should make things salty. And don't forget to like or dislike this video. I'm cool with whatever choice you make. Please feel free to leave a comment and tell me what you think the 10 best Nintendo consoles are and why. Make sure to hop on the bandy wagon and follow my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Tumblr. Thank you all so much for watching, and don't forget, 
that all toasters toast toast, not bread. Man, did you guys have a good new year? I certainly did. Don't forget to also check out the top 10 games we need for virtual console. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. Top 10 Mario games. Yeah, that list is a little outdated, but you'll still watch it because it says Mario on it. Derp, derp. Also, cause speaking of Mario, Mario Party 8 Let's Play this week. Wow, that is like the coolest Let's Play ever. Also, chat is awesome. You guys are amazing. Bye-bye. Peace.